All right, fifth grade, so we're going to move on to our next lesson in our long division chapter where we're going to discuss uh, how to interpret the remainder. Our objective today is to review the sort of three major ways in which we can interpret the quotient and the remainder of division word problems. Our three major interpretations that we're going to talk about um, is when the remainder of a word problem is actually the answer to the question being asked. Um, our second major interpretation is when we actually ignore the remainder, as in the remainder is not part of um, how we answer the question to our division word problem. And the third interpretation is when we round our final quotient or our final answer up to accommodate the remainder. Um, all of this might sound a little bit complex right now, but I think once you see a couple examples, you will... Um, actually understand a little bit more how to interpret the remainder. I want to let you know that as we go through this, I'm not going to tell you which strategy I am using. I'm going to ask you to kind of think hard about these three different strategy choices. All right, guys, let's check out the word problem above. So our word problem says that a tent requires seven poles to be completed or to, to be put up. There are 201 poles in all. How many tents can be put up? So I'm going to look at this and know that I need to divide 201 poles by 7 poles per tent. If I divide 201 by 7, I'll know how many tents I can put up um, complete with 7 poles. So 7 does not go into 2 because 7 is larger than 2, so I'm going to put my little x there. But 7 does go into 20, 2 times without going over, 2 times 7 is 14, so we're going to complete our regular long division. 20 minus 14 is 6. Bring down my 1. Now I need to redivide and say how many times does 7 go into 61. I know that 7 times 8 is 56. So I would say that's close without going over. 8 times 7 is 56. If I do 61 minus 56, I come up with 5. There's nothing left to bring down, which tells me this is the end of my long division equation. So my final answer to this division equation is 201 poles divided by 7 poles per tent gives me 28 tenths with a remainder of 5. So I want you to take a minute and look at the question that was originally asked. How many tenths can be put up? How many tenths can be put up? I want you to, um, or you're going to pause the video in just a second, and this is going to ask you which strategy is this utilizing. So hopefully you took a minute to sort of analyze our possibilities with our last equation. Uh, you can see I rewrote the work, 201 poles in all divided by 7 poles to put up uh, 1 tent. So 201 divided by 7 is 28 remainder 5. Uh, hopefully you were able to understand that in this word problem we actually ignored the remainder, as in the remainder didn't impact or influence our uh, final answer. The way we know this is that um, 201 poles divided by 7 poles per tent gives me 28 completed tents, and the remainder of 5 is how many poles were left over. 5 poles can't put up a tent, therefore we actually ignore the remainder in this problem. All right, friends, we're going to move on and complete a second example. I'm going to read the word problem, solve it out, and give you a minute to figure out how you would interpret the quotient and the remainder of this equation. So Sam made brownies for a bake sale. She made 29 brownies in all. She's going to put two brownies into each bag for the sale. How many brownies will be left over for Sam to eat? So my division equation here is 29 divided by 2, so 29 into groups of 2. So 2 goes into 2 one time, 1 times 2 is 2, nothing left over, bring down my 9. 2 goes into 9, I know it goes in 4 times without going over, 4 times 2 is 8, 9 minus 8 is 1. There's nothing left to bring down, that tells me this is my remainder. So the um, answer to my division equation, 29 divided by 2, is 14 remainder 1. So let's reread the question here. So it says, uh, see I made brownies for a bake sale, 29 brownies in all. If she puts two brownies in each bag, how many brownies will be left over for Sam to eat? Let's take a minute. The video is going to pause in a second and ask you a quiz question and determine which 
interpretation of the quotient and the remainder should you be using. Hopefully you took a second to kind of think through our original equation. Our original equation asked us to figure out how many brownies would be left over for Sam to eat. So she made 29 in all, put two in each bag, which tells us that she made 14 complete bags. Whoops, sorry guys. She made 14 complete bags, but she had one brownie left over. So in this case, the remainder to this long division is actually the answer to our um, long division word problem. So the remainder is actually our answer. We're basically ignoring the quotient and trying to say how many brownies were left over. There was one left over for Sam to eat. So by process of elimination, you can probably understand that in this equation, you are going to end up rounding your answer because of your remainder. But let's check it out and see if we can understand why. So we have 174 guests being invited to a wedding. We can fit eight guests at every table. Uh, how many tables will be needed for all of the guests? Because think, you don't want to have anyone standing uh, while trying to eat their dinner. So eight does not go into one because eight is larger than one, but eight goes into 17 two times. Two times eight is 16. Whoops. 17 minus 16 is one. Bring down my four. How many times does eight go into 14 without going over? Well, it only actually goes in one time. One times eight is eight. 14 minus eight is six. Nothing left to bring down, so this tells me that my remainder is six. So let's check this one out together. So if we have 174 guests in all, divided into groups of eight, because we can fit eight people at a table, we've got 21 complete tables. And what is this remainder six out here? I think this is telling me that I have six guests that don't complete a table of eight. But my guess would be I don't want them to have to stand while everyone else is eating dinner. So what that tells me is that I need to use my remainder to round up my quotient. So instead of 21 tables in all with six people standing, I actually need to make sure that I have 22 tables. That tells me that one table is only going to have six guests at it, but that's okay. As long as everyone is sitting, then we're in good shape. We're going to take a few minutes, friends, and you're actually going to end with uh, one open-ended question in which you summarize in your own words the three major strategies that we have focused on. Um, you can kind of put it into your own words uh, in, you know, complete sentences, answer, or write down what the three major ways that we can interpret the remainder and the quotient together in word problems. Thanks.